Hey, let me ask you one question right now. What do you think is the correct time signature of the song Perfect by Ed Sheeran? Is it in 3-4 or in 6-8? Wait, 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 wait. I see you trying to Google it just now. Well, let me tell you something. The internet is flooded with a lot of wrong answers. You want to know the right answer? The right answer is actually... Hey folks, welcome back to Gubi Star Music YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel, my name is Yakub Saputra and I'm a composer and a jazz pianist. And I love to talk about anything music related, from the mechanics of it to the psychological aspect of being a well-rounded musician. Last week we already clarified the misconception about accidentals. What should call a chord E flat major instead of calling it D sharp major. If you haven't already, make sure to watch last week's episode so you won't embarrass yourself anymore in front of your peers. And in today's video, I want to talk about another misconceptions that happens surprisingly often among musicians, even among the musicians that called themselves professional for a while, which is how to know exactly the difference between 3-4 and 6-8. And to do that, I'm going to use the song Perfect by Ed Sheeran as an example to explain the whole concept. To begin, let me ask you this first. How many beats does 3-4 have? 3? Correct. 3-4 does have 3 beats in its measure. How about 6-8? How many beats does 6-8 have? What? 6? Well, that will be wrong. If you say that 6-8 has 6 beats, you know what? This video is especially for you. Because the right answer is 2. Yeah, the 6-8 time signature only has 2 beats in each measure, not 6. This, unfortunately, is one of the biggest misconceptions among musicians. Believe it or not, I've heard an argument that goes like this. Dude, it's practically the same. If you simplify 6-8 mathematically, it would be 3-4 anyway. Well, yeah, but it doesn't work like that in a musical concept. Just because the top part or the numerator says 6, it does not mean that it actually has 6 beats. It only means that it contains 6 8 notes in each measure. Just as in 3-4, which means that it contains 3 quarter notes in each measure. Even though if I subdivide all the quarter notes in 3-4, it sure does turn into 6 equal 8 notes. But the number of 8 notes itself is yet to inform us about the beat. Mm. When I think about it, I think it's better for me to jump to the most obvious difference between 3, 4, and 6, 8 and fill the gap along the way. How about that? Alright, so the most important difference, or I should say the most obvious difference between 3, 4, and 6, 8 is in how their 8 notes are grouped. In 3, 4, the 6, 8 notes are grouped into 3 groups of 2, 8 notes. While in 6-8, they are grouped into two groups of 3-8 notes. Those groups are the beats that I'm referring to in the beginning. That's why I said 3-4 has only three beats, while 6-8, despite its name, has only two beats. The grouping matters, because when we group the eight notes in a certain way, we consequently establish a very specific pulse pattern that fundamentally defines the piece of the music that you're playing or writing. If you hear a drum pattern like this, what do you think is the time signature? If you say it's in 2-4, you may be correct. Because now, we only hear a very obvious 2 beats pattern between a kick and a snare. But if I reveal the hi-hat pattern such as this, guess what? Our first assumptions turns out to be wrong. This drum pattern turned out to be a 6-8 pattern. That's because the larger beat is subdivided into three. For the sake of clarity, I will show you how the hi-hat pattern in a true 2-4 time signature would sound like. Notice that the larger beat, which is played by the kick and the snare, is now subdivided into two, which is reflected by the hi-hat. Now in contrast, what do you think is the right time signature if you hear a drum pattern like this? Without more information, it's safe to assume that it is in 3-4 pattern because we obviously hear three distinct beats, don't we? But once again, we can only be sure whether it's a 3-4 pattern or not once we hear how these beats are subdivided. If this pattern is indeed a simple 3-4 pattern, the hi-hat will play something like this. But what if the hi-hat pattern turns out to be like this?
This is what we call a 9-8 time signature pattern. Do you see now how 6-8 and 3-4 are fundamentally different? And how 6-8 actually have some similarity with 2-4? Well, let's see how they're actually related. In the textbooks, they categorize 2-4 and 6-8 as duple meter because it's based on two beats per measure. And for 3-4 and 9-8, they categorized as a triple meter because it's based on three beats per measure. But how about the most common 4-4 time signature? 4-4 four, four is categorized as quadruple meter alongside 12-8 because it's based on four beats per measure. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? But because of the nature of how they are subdivided, 2-4, 3-4, and 4-4 are also categorized as simple meter, while 6-8, 9-8, and 12-8 are categorized as compound meter. Do you see now how they are related to each other? So in other words, to decide whether a meter is duple, triple, or quadruple, it depends on how many beats the music has in each measure. But to decide whether a meter is a simple or compound meter, it's a matter of how those beats are subdivided. If you want this table as a poster, you can find it in the link below, just in case you want to post it somewhere in your room. It's free, who cares? This concept of simple or compound meter is actually rather important because it's almost like the DNA of the song. In simple meter, we know that the eight notes are grouped in two. But what difference does it really make? It means that the two eight notes are not of the same weight because of the first eight note is usually regarded as stronger than the second one. Unless, of course, if you accented the upbeat as a part of arrangement or something. But naturally speaking, when you group a series of notes together, the first note is the stronger note in the group. This is true whether it is in the subdivision level or in a beat level. This discrepancy between the strong note and the weak note is what creates a distinct pulse of a simple meter like this and of a compound meter like this. To be honest, classifying them is the easy part and showing it to you with a clear drum pattern or with a metronome without putting it in the context of an actual song is just what any boring textbook already did. But you know that Kabistra Music YouTube channel is all about understanding it on a practical level, aren't we? So that's why you must subscribe to this channel and smash the like button and hit the notification bell because that will help this channel to reach more people like you. Well, thank you for that. So let's take another listen of this song and use the knowledge that you just received to guess the right time signature of this song without Googling it, of course. Is it in 3-4 or is it in 6-8? Any guess? Well, I don't want to give you the answer just yet. Now, even if you already know the answer for sure, I still want you to think through it for another second. If your answer in 3-4, I want you to sincerely ask yourself, why is it not in 6-8 instead? And what would be your reason? And also try to use your imaginative ear to imagine how it would sound like if it were to be in 6-8. And if you say it's in 6-8, I want you to sincerely ask yourself the opposite. Why is it not in 3-4? What would be your reason to say that it absolutely cannot be in 3-4? And also imagine how it would sound like if it were to be in 3-4. By doing this mental exercise, you are now really testing your understanding, which is by challenging it head on with the alternatives. All right, right now I'm gonna give you the right answer, okay? The right answer is 12-8. Yeah, I like to do that, giving a questions and giving the all false choices. <laughs> but how so though? Because there is more than just the drum patterns to know definitely that this song is in fact a 12 8 time signature song. Notice that the phrasing of the melody is not equally distributed among the measures. It looks like the melody mostly happens in these measures. And these measures are practically empty. So that means each measure does not weigh the same. Because apparently, these measures have more emphasis than these empty ones. Do you see that? And let's try to put a simple 3-4 pattern on top of it, okay? Let's see how it sounds. I found a love for me. Now, you can really feel the song becomes so choppy and doesn't flow very well, does it? That's how I know that it is definitely not in 3-4. But how about 6-8? What if we imagine for a minute that this song is in fact in 6-8? I found a love for me. Well, darling, just now it flows much better, doesn't it? 
you can immediately feel the difference that the quarter note that we thought earlier when we imagined that it was in 3-4 is actually just an 8 note subdivision, which is very light. But even though 6-8 already feels so much better than 3-4, it is still not the right answer because 12-8 is the right answer, remember? You don't believe me? Let me show you two reasons why this perfect song is in 12-8 instead of 6-8. Number one, let's look closer to the pattern of the phrasing. Love and me sounds like they are of the same weight. Don't they? And also look that these supposedly strong beats are still quite empty, meaning they still bear less weight than these beats. And for that reason, I suppose that this is of a weaker beat relative to this much stronger beat. And you will notice that this is a consistent pattern throughout the song. Now, because we recognize that the strong beats happens after four beats and that the song has a triplet subdivision, we can now conclude that it's in 12 Eight. Trust me, this confusion of 6-8 and 12-8 happens all the time. Just because we feel a triplet subdivisions, it doesn't always mean that the music is in 6-8. We still have to look at the bigger picture. But I have another reason to support this. And for that, we're going to do a harmonic rhythm analysis, which is just a fancy term that basically means look at where the chords are changing. Notice the chord changes every four beats. That means something important happens every four beats instead of every two beats. These facts give us another assurance that the music is indeed in 12-8 time signature. So now, judging by the phrasing pattern and the harmonic rhythm of it, we can be very sure now that the song Perfect by Ed Sheeran is indeed in 12-8 time signature. Not in 3-4 and also not in 6-8 like this Reddit guy speculated. But there's something that you have to remember about music. That it is not a pure science. There are in fact a lot of songs or pieces of music that are really ambiguous. And you know what? Changing the meter or the time signature of a song has been one of the creative tools that arrangers have been used to make an old song sound fresh again. So there you go. Now you know better how to tell the difference between all kinds of different time signature. If you in fact have a specific song that you still can't quite figure out what its time signature is, write in the comment below and I'll come back to you with the right answer and the reason why. And if you find this video helpful, Please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to this channel, and hit the notification bell. Not only that you'll be the first to know when I upload the next video, but you will also help this channel tremendously. So, thank you again guys for hanging out with me today. I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.